Hello everyone, Carol Garrison with Carol's Creative Escape. It is another Mon Make It Monday night. And I told you last week I was going to be bringing in um, a new stamp set. And I'm really, really excited to be sharing this with you. Um, I've got a couple designs that I did kind of using the same layout just to share with you how versatile the stamps are and, and reflects the seasons. Um, even though you wouldn't necessarily get that from the, the stamp name itself. And then, um, even more exciting, I participated in a card swap. I shared with you a couple of the swaps that I made last week to share with people. And one of the cards that I received was from this suite of products. And it was so beautiful that I asked the um, person that created that card if it would be okay if I... Sorry, I'm just checking to make sure I'm showing up here on my Facebook page. And it looks like I am. That way I know I'm live. Anyhow, I asked her if it would be all right if I used her card in my class tonight. Now, normally when I get a card like this, I'm going to add my own little twist to it and things like that. But I am actually almost copying her card directly because it was so, so pretty. So when I get to that point, I'll let you know who I got it from and and share um you know, the steps in the process. So not only am I featuring this set, but I'm doing a fun fold as well with that card. So hi, April. Thanks for joining me. Glad that you could uh, stop in tonight. So um, anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and get started because I'm really just excited to share this suite of products with you. So give me a minute or two. I'm going to go ahead and flip my camera around. Hi, Kay. Um, you're coming just in time to have your world shake all over the place here. Just a moment, please. See, I'm not going to stand up yet. You don't need to see that part of me. All right, you can look at my lovely lighthouse. <clears throat> and I'll pop you into my camera. I'm still hoping to get up on the North Shore where I can see some pretty lighthouses, but every time I think I've got it working out for my weekend, it doesn't quite go as I expected, and I don't get up there, so... Maybe on Saturday this weekend, especially with the long weekend. But I don't think I'm going to have to twist my camera around a whole lot to get it straight. So I guess I'm making some progress on that, aren't I? Good grief. Alrighty. Um, we've had some cooler than normal weather here. And I'm, I'm looking forward to things warming up again a bit for us. Um, it sounds like by the weekend we're going to be back up in the 70s, which will be um, kind of nice to have. Um, I this weekend, um, my husband did recover from COVID, and I managed to get through without catching it. So I'm very grateful for that, and um, also grateful that compared to some of John's coworkers, John had a very mild case of COVID, and um, we were grateful for that. So uh, with the cooler weather that we had, we um, did a fumigation of our house basically open windows up had the cool air breeze blowing through and we kind of got our good spring cleaning in um in terms of getting the house clean wiping everything down so i think we're ready to function again and it, um it's actually kind of nice to have some real spring cleaning done too for a change still have to do windows but mine aren't that bad because i can pull them all and do them from inside my house with the exception of one window so anyhow Enough about me. I hope you guys all had a great weekend as well. Let me show you the stamp set that I'm going to feature. It is on pages 98 and 99. Yep, 98 and 99 in the annual catalog. And this comes both as a bundle where you can just buy the stamps and the dies or as a suite. So you get the gorgeous designer series paper, this pretty gold foil paper, the stamps and the dies and you guys you're going to want to get the whole thing because it is it's just stunning and this is one I ignored it wasn't even on my things I want to order list until I saw somebody start demonstrating it um, it's gorgeous and I think like I mentioned last week it covers multiple seasons so we've got leaves for fall, a snowflake for winter, flowers for kind of the spring, seashells for summer. It's got beautiful greetings. It's got a couple just backgroundy type designs and it's got some really cool dyes. So again, this is the Texture Chick suite of products. The stamp set itself is called Season of Chick 
and it is a photopolymer stamp set. It includes 17 stamps and it's um, two-step stamping so you get both the outside and the inside image for the flower, the seashells, and the leaves. And then um, the snowflake kind of stands alone in terms of that, but it does have things that you could kind of sploosh through to add a little background if you did second or third generation stamping. And then just some, some really great greetings. And again, photopolymer. Um, so it's nice because you can stick your stamps right in here. You know if you're missing any. Um, and you can see where you're stamping, which makes it easy for that. And then here are the dies. Now this die set includes 19 dies. And so there's a um, kind of the lines for the seashell as well as the outline. Same thing for the snowflake. There's a couple different snowflake options, just a couple different seashells that come in. There's leaves with some options, some flowers, this very cool background that I haven't used yet, but I'm envisioning what it's going to look like, and there will be another card um, made with that. So again, 19 dies in the set. Um, it coordinates wonderfully with the stamp set. And then it comes with this gorgeous designer series paper, and this is a specialty paper. So it's going to be a double-sided thing. One side is um, foil. And one side is just your regular designer series paper. The coordinating colors for this are Evening Evergreen, Mango Melody, Petal Pink, Pool Party, Soft Succulent, and Soft Suede. I will also argue that I think you could use a gray with this. Um, Early Espresso will also work. On a couple of the sheets so um, don't limit yourself to what is on the the description here so you've got this beautiful one kind of your wintry scene with snowflakes and this would be more for fall um, this tone goes very nicely with early espresso I'll show you that in a card that I made and you can kind of see the images of leaves on here I would put this one more obviously with the spring and the flower. I haven't actually used this paper yet, but I will be. Um, so pretty, the, the Mango Melody really jumps out on that one. And then we've got this beautiful florally print. Um, it's, it looks like it's on a wood grain background with the flowers imposed on top of that. If you like the vintagey look, this is the paper that's gonna be good for you. And then we've got the wonderful seashells. And if you've watched me at all, you know that I do enjoy seashells, seashore, anything to do with the oceany type thing. And this one, actually, I used with Sahara sandpaper. And I think you could probably make it work with soft suede as well. It's going to bring out a little bit of the darker tone. So it depends on what you're making. Um, but love the seashells. And then we've got this one that is kind of a green with wood wood green through it and just splatters. Um, can really see the evening evergreen and the um, soft succulent in this one. And then if you flip, whoops, you don't need to see that one. If you flip these papers over and do it the right way, you're going to start to see the foil. And so here we've got and it's gold foil, um, a really cool background with the gold foil on top of it. And then this is gonna be more your pool party, um, mango melody and petal pink with the gold foil. And then here we've got basically petal pink and mango melody, again with your gold foil making the squares, just very, very pretty. And this one I'm going to call mostly Petal Pink with a titch of Mango Melody in here. I'm wondering if you could even... You might even be able to make this work with Flirty Flamingo. Pushing it a little bit, but I think you can make it work. Uh, mostly pink tones on that one. And then here's another one more with the Soft Succulent. And a little bit of the Pool Party is going to show through with the gold foil and then you've got this one which is primarily the petal pink with just gold foil dots on it it's just so pretty it is so so pretty and again this paper didn't jump out at me in the catalog um, i had to actually see it and i'm in love with it 
and I'm not even really a vintage person. So there you go with that designer series paper. And then it comes with the specialty gold foil paper. And this foil paper is called, I wanna make sure I'm giving you the right name. It is the Distress Gold, it's 12 by 12, and you get two sheets, it's specialty paper. And I'm hoping that it's gonna get picked up in the camera. It's kind of like rough or two-toned. Um, I'll let my camera focus on it here. So you can see the texture. Um, it is smooth, but you can kind of see the texture with the different colors. And the back of it is just white. It does cut very easily. It's not probably quite as thick as designer series paper, um, but again, equally as beautiful. So make sure if you order this that you get this as well because you're gonna want it. All right, let me show you a couple of the cards that I've created, and then I wanna jump in and show you this card that I received from one of my fellow demonstrators. Um, I've caught three of the seasons. I just didn't get spring done yet. So I've got this fall card. Um, I've used die cuts. I've stamped out the leaf image. I've used front and back of designer series paper. This was done on early espresso, which again kind of pulls out some of the color in here. And I've just got the thinking of you stamp that I used with nothing on the inside of the card. And this is actually just a, a four and a quarter by five with a card flap. Um, it's two and three quarters by eight and a half and you score it at four and a quarter. And then I just added designer series paper. Um, the original card that I looked at actually just had you put a solid sheet of designer series paper and I can't stand to waste my designer series paper that way. So I figured out my measurements and just went a little bit over what the space was gonna be so that the edges would be covered by this piece when I attached it. And that way I had pretty consistent spacing going on, but I wasn't wasting a whole chunk of designer series paper because, you know, I can't do that very well. All right, so there's my fall themed card. I did one with the seashells and using the Distress Gold foil paper as well. And this is one I used the Sahara Sand cardstock on. Um, not a color I use super often, but I just thought it looked nice with this paper. I don't know. Anyhow, um, featuring the petal pink color and Sahara sand. And on the inside, I used the You Are Amazing Beyond Measure sentiment on the inside. So there we go with that one. Hi, Donna, how are you tonight? And then I hit the winter theme. Um, this one, I think if I were to do it again, I think I'd do my snowflakes in a slightly different color. They actually have um, soft succulent behind them, and then I use silver foil. And then my card base is soft succulent with the um, evening evergreen. And I did some second generation stamping on the inside uh, with the birthday greeting, wishing you the best birthday ever. And on this one, I used the same pattern of designer series paper. Um, but I think, like I said, I, I would experiment a little bit with my snowflakes to see if I couldn't get them to pop just a little bit more. So those are the cards that I have made so far with this set. And then I'm going to share with you the one that I received. Sorry, I'm taking it out of the envelope. I should have done that beforehand in the card swap. And this is a fun fold. Again, the base of it is four, uh, four and a quarter by five and a half. And then the card sits on top and is built on top of that. But it's a fun fold card and it's easy to make, but I think it's just really cool. So this is kind of like an envelope flap that goes underneath these flowers and the card itself opens up like that. Isn't that cool? So I'm gonna show you how to make this particular card and I think you're gonna be pleased with how simple it is. I have done a little bit of pre-work on mine. Um, only because I do did want to do a little bit of embossing um, and I didn't want to have everything running while I was doing that. So to start with, I did already die cut and build one of my flowers, but I want to show you how easy it is to do this. And I'm going to do this one in pool party. And so I'm going to stamp, yeah, I cleaned it remember stamp 
this just on my card stock. And then set that out of the way. You know, I'm not real happy with how that stamped. I am going to try to do a little cleaning on it. I think it can stamp better. Squeak, squeak. So let me take it first with my chamois. I'm going to clean it. And then a quick tip is just take a regular pencil eraser and run it over the stamp. Um, it helps kind of release, release any film that may have built up during the manufacturing process. And then I'm just going to wipe it off. You can also, if you have denim jeans, kind of wipe it on that and that'll roughen it up a little bit. I'm cheating tonight and wearing leggings, so it's not going to help me a whole lot. And I am going to get a fresh piece of white paper. We're going to try this again. I think the ink is sticking to it a whole lot better than what it was. All right. I can live with that. And I know I said earlier I was just going to move the black out of the way, but I will set something on it. So it is safer for me to clean it. All right. I'm going to bring out my mini cut and emboss machine. Um, I think again last week I mentioned I didn't know that I really needed one of these. Um, what I have found is I'm leaving this one on my desk because it's small enough when it's closed up it's not in my way and I am doing a little bit more die cutting simply because it's very convenient. I don't have to get up and go to where my bigger die cut machine is for some of these little pieces. So I am now going to just line up my die and this always takes me probably longer than it should, but, you know, I'm challenged a little bit spatially. Ooh, I think this one goes here. All right. And you basically just want to line up the inside of the die so that you don't see any white there. And then I've got just a little piece of washi tape I left on the handle here. Um... It's a retired roll, and I'm just going to put it lightly to hold this die in place. And I'll finish making my sandwich here. And I'm just going to crank her through. And pop it out. And set my die aside. All right. And then I'm going to cut the outside piece on this textured gold foil. Now I did, because this is such a um, lined piece and I'm not going to very easily be able to get glue on it or anything else, I did attach an adhesive sheet to the back of my gold foil here so that I will have it ready to stick on. Um when I'm done with the die cutting. So again, I'm just gonna crank this through. And I'm just gonna run it through backwards so I'm sure you get a good cut on it. Yep, all those pieces will pop out. All right. And you can see again, I'm gonna fold this up how tiny this is this is my hand it's basically as long as my hand if you don't count the handle so very compact and easy to leave on my desk um i'm loving it i am pleasantly surprised because i did not think that was going to happen and then i'm going to grab my take your pick tool and try to poke out any little pieces and there aren't most of them stuck in here so I don't have to pull them out of my actual die cut that's kind of nice set that aside so I don't lose it 
All right, and then um, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble. Now, one thing that I do encourage you to do before you pull the backing off, because the, the adhesive is really sticky. So just take a few minutes to figure out um, how to line up. I think that's kind of like the heart shape. I sort of look for, like if I'm doing a puzzle, And I think I need to go over one more. And I think I still don't have it. Does it go like that? Oh, good grief. I think I need to start working some jigsaw puzzles to get my spatial recognition back. Because I'm not really seeing it. There we go. All right. It's really good to line it up first so that when you peel the backing off, you can stick it on pretty easily. So I will leave my base flower there and then I just need to get the back piece peeled off. And now this is sticky like a sticker. And I'll start lining up that piece because I know that's where it goes. Oops, and I just tore it, but I think we'll still be okay. The adhesive is really sticky, so what happened just now is it actually stuck to my finger. But I'm going to make this work. And the only ones that are going to know that I tore it are the ones watching the video. Because it's not going to show up when we go to do the card. Alright, so there is that piece done. And then... I would like to just show you real quick the rest of the measurements. So these were just done on scrap pieces of basic white. Um, to make the card, you need to have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of cardstock. I am using Pool Party as my background layer. The card itself, um, this piece, measures um, five and a quarter by eight and you score it at four. And so you can see I use the thanks and you are amazing beyond measure. I did this ahead of time because I actually embossed it with gold and um, wanted to have that done so that I didn't have the noise. Then you will also need two pieces. I've got one piece of cardstock, one piece of designer series paper. Both of them measure one inch by four inches and these are gonna become our banner. And then the most important piece because it creates our flap, is a four by four piece of designer series paper that you score on the diagonal. And so I've got it scored going this way because this will become our flap. There is a little bit of cutting that we'll need to do to, to trim off the ends just a titch. Um, but other than that, we're, we're set to go. So again, the measurements are four and a quarter by five and a half. A piece of basic white cardstock that measures five and a quarter by eight, scored at four inches. A four by four piece of designer series paper scored on the diagonal. Two strips of paper, one designer and one cardstock that measure one by four inches. And then your scraps to do your flowers. Okay? So let's get started on the assembly. The first thing we're going to do is take our tag punch. And I am just gonna slide these pieces in. Now when I use this punch, I actually find it's easier for me to flip it upside down. Um, because this does multiple sizes, this allows me just to check real quick that I have it centered pretty well. But sometimes I need to be facing the front side in order to get it lined up. I think my paper is just a titch bigger than what a one inch measurement is. Okay, and so oh, you can't even see me. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll move it up and start over. So I'm going to slide my cardstock in on the top here. Um, this allows you to do measurable different widths um, for your banners. And so my one inch piece here might be off just a skosh, and so it's a little tight. 
um, anyhow, then I like to flip it over and make sure that I have it centered in the opening because then my punch is going to be centered and I get my pennants that way. Okay, very handy punch. Um, you can do both the banner this way and then you can also um, do it so that it points out instead of in on this punch. Let me see if I have a one inch scrap of white. I can show you what I mean here. And I do. So instead of having it Um, whoops, I didn't get that one centered very well because I didn't flip it over. All right. So it goes, makes a, a point instead of an indentation. I think you can kind of see that. So you can get some fun layers going um, as well when you're using this punch. And you can do three different widths as well for both types of them. So that's the banner punch. I will set that one aside. We only need these pieces today. All right. And then the other thing that we're going to do, of course, you're going to fold this in half. Make sure you burnish it really well. I managed to get something on it, but I'm not worried because I think I'm going to have that covered up with things. And then this piece, I'm going to fold over. Now, one thing I'll warn you is when you are making score lines on designer series paper, you don't need to press as hard as you do on cardstock. And you probably don't need to go over it multiple times like we sometimes do with cardstock. And then finally, when you're burnishing it, make it a soft touch because you can actually, um, basically, you're breaking the fibers down a little bit when you're doing that. And because this is a thinner piece of paper to start with, um, you could tear it more easily because of that. Okay, so let's start to assemble. Now this piece is going to go actually like this. And so you can tell that it's a little bit wider than what the card is. And so all I'm gonna do is take my trimmer and I'm just gonna line it up and take off a skosh. And again, I just realized you can't see what I'm trimming here. So I'll flip it over. And again, I'm lining it up just over the cutting line. Maybe kind of like about an eighth of an inch, just a skosh. And cutting it. And that just flattens off these two ends. And then I'm going to measure against here just to make sure. I want it to pretty much line up the length of the card. And I did a pretty good job, if I say so myself. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is take my seal adhesive and I'm going to lightly press down, check mark, down, down, and check mark. And then I'm going to line up my back of my card with this point just below the score line and make sure the top and bottom are even and so that's how you make the flap now I'm feeling a little bit of resistance here like this piece might be hanging over just a teeny bit sometimes that happens so I'm gonna go ahead and take another little skosh off that side of my card and then it's gonna fold flat. So I didn't take very much off, you can tell, but it just made a difference. My cutting wasn't apparently as accurate as it could have been. All right, so then on this piece, all I'm gonna do now is take my adhesive, and again, a light touch with that check mark. And I'm gonna put this on centered on this piece of pool party cardstock. So I just want an even border going all the way around. 
And this card, I don't think I mentioned this yet. This card is one that I received, like I said, in the card swap from fellow demonstrator by the name of Sandy Stellenberg. Um, Sandy and I actually started fairly close together under the same person and um, have become friends over the years at various events. Like I said, she's the one that contributed this layout and I just absolutely fell in love with it. So I sent her a message saying, would you mind if I cased your card exactly? Cased is a term that we use, um, copy and share everything kind of thing. Um, I think there's some other twists that people put it on it as well, but it's basically taking somebody else's idea and adding your own twist to it. I actually asked Sandy if she'd mind if I copy it pretty much exactly. Now tell me I'm going to cover. Oh, good. I'm going to cover up that dark spot. And she said, certainly. So I appreciate that, Sandy. Thank you so much. All right. So when I assembled my banners, because I wasn't sure how far over to have my pool party on, I just lined up this one and adhered it first so that it was pretty much at the halfway point. I've got a little bit of it showing here. And then I could add it to my card and have it spaced correctly for both layers. So that's why you saw me assembling it like I did just now. All right. And then I've got my two flowers and I am going to put my petal pink on the bottom. And this one is just held on by adhesive. There's nothing super fancy about it. And the spacing of this is kind of important. And it's really important because you don't want it um, getting in the way of the flap here. And so um, you need to watch to where you put your adhesive because you want your card to be able to get under the flap um, as well without getting stuck in there. So I, I really only had adhesive on one side. And then I want to make sure, yeah, she did what I thought she did. This, this flower is actually held on. I don't think she did that with this one. Nope. This flower is held on with dimensionals. And so again, you want to make sure you're only putting them on the one side because otherwise you're going to end up um, not being able to get the flap underneath your card. So I'm going to put one here and one here. Um, and I'm keeping this side open because again, I want it to be able to, to slide that flap underneath it. And that's going to go angled right about there. And now you can tell that our flap can slide underneath here if I did this right. And if not, we'll be doing some moving, but um, it, it slips underneath these two things and that holds it in flap. So this is kind of like an envelope flap. And then I'm going to take my iridescent rhinestones because there needs to be some pretty bling on this as well. And my elusive take your pick tool. Let me get some of that putty out. And I'm just going to add a little bit of bling. Um, to start with, I'm going to put the medium sized pieces in the center of my flowers. They have a nice white opening, so it works well. Actually, I'm using the small ones for this, not the medium. So we've got a couple there, and then I'm just going to add a couple more onto my card, kind of here, and I'm going to add a bigger one out here, just a random one. And I think, because I feel like it, I'm going to put one more up there. So. How easy is that and how fun is this card, you guys? Quick envelope flap, pull it out. You can write your note inside, close it up, and it fits into a regular envelope. So you're not gonna run into issues with that. And again, because you're not using multiple, multiple layers, it'll go with regular postage. Although with the rhinestones on here, you may want to protect it a little bit, which could add some weight to the postage, um, just so that it doesn't, the, the rhinestones don't get caught in sorting machines. All right, 
So there you go. You have the Season of Chick stamp set using the gorgeous Designer Series paper. And remember, I said I was going to use my Designer Series paper this year. So with this set, it goes like that. And here's a couple more examples from this suite of cards, all showcasing Designer Series paper. And then this beautiful envelope card that was designed and created by Sandy Stellenberg. So thank you everyone for joining me tonight. I appreciate it. Um, take a look, second look at this if you haven't already. Go back through the catalog and take a look at this and just think what the possibilities are. Um, seasons of Chick, kind of vintage look, but you get all four seasons covered in here. Um, you make each season of life even more beautiful. You could make a, if I got my fourth card done here, I'd have one for each of the four primary seasons. And I could put it in one of a, a gift box type thing and use this. You make, you make each season even more beautiful. Each season of life even more beautiful. That would make a really cute gift to share with someone. So just take a look at it and think of your options with this. And if nothing else, try making this card with supplies that you have on hand. Because it's very easy. I will include dimensions after I'm done um, with the video here so that you have those in writing as well. I hope everybody has a great week. Um, next week is Memorial Day, but I will have, at the very least, I'll have a, a, a video recorded that you can watch on Monday. Um, I don't have any big plans to be gone on Monday, so you may catch me live again too. I don't know yet. Um, we'll see what happens as the weekend progresses. Have a great week, everyone, and I will see you on Monday. Thanks. Bye-bye.